Well, hello everyone. My name is Prime and welcome back to another episode of ETS2 Showcases. Man, it has been a little while because of all the ATS stuff, but I am glad to be back here on ETS2. And as you can tell, I am going to be tracking out for the first time the Volvo Construction Equipment DLC that dropped for both American Truck Simulator and ETS2. And of course, today we're checking out the ETS2 side of things. Uh, so we're going to be doing an evening journey here or late afternoon from here in Glasgow up to Aberdeen. It's been quite a while since I've been able to, well, I actually haven't been in the UK for quite quite a while here in ETS2 and decided to go to the northern part because I haven't been up here yet and I'm driving the Volvo Globetrotter XL uh, thought I'd deck it out with some of this kind of construction-y heavy equipment uh, go and I'm taking the Volvo Tract Excavator today uh, the exact model number is pull up the information screen the EC220E for those who really want to know and it's 45,000 pounds we're just over that and so why don't we go ahead and get into the truck here and get her started up. Been a while since I've driven the Volvo as well. Uh, I believe the last time was, well, actually, it's been quite a while. I just can't even remember. So we're just going to get out of here. And of course, I guess one thing we're talking about right off the bat is if you want to, or if you have picked up the Volvo Construction Equipment DLC and you're not sure where it is available in the job market, well, you have to own a low boy or flatbed of some sort. Uh, keep in mind that different sizes will unlock different things. Uh, so I just went to the max one because I wanted to be able to take anything that's possible in the DLC, the five different pieces of equipment, plus the uh, bucket and tires, which I do believe come with it as well. Uh, so this is the low the low bed trailer with the four axles, and they do steer, which is something, and I might as well actually, let's just get the beacon going there. There we go. Um, that's something actually I, uh, I honestly uh, forgot about there, and I guess we can go ahead. I don't need to... Uh, I forgot I have to drive on the left-hand side of the road. And the other thing I have to remember is that this thing swings out like crazy uh, because it is steerable axles. And so, yeah, it is definitely a little bit of a mental... Uh, a mental battle here for me considering I've been doing a ton of American Truck Simulator and I got to get over uh, to this lane over here. Hopefully everyone is doing well. I certainly am. I've actually been battling a little bit of a head cold the last few days, uh, but I am feeling a ton better and well, that's why I'm doing this video. Hopefully I won't uh, have too many interruptions with uh, cough attacks and stuff like that, but I think we're doing a lot better and I'm happy to be able to be doing uh, some coverage here on ETS2, especially with this new DLC. Come on, lad. You can go. Uh, I guess he was being patient. Good idea. Uh, so let's go ahead and spin up here. Uh, I always feel like I'm going to cut that corner, but I'm really not. Pretty impressive. Uh, so this is the maxed out Globetrotter. Like I was kind of why well, the Globetrotter XL is the biggest Volvo in the game as far as I know. Uh, but I have the 750 uh, horsepower engine in it just because I can, and it's 12 speed. And I'm just doing automatic today because why not? To be honest with you. And so yeah, it is definitely nice to be back here uh, in ETS2. It's been quite a while, like I was hinting at there. And uh, of course, you. I guess I, I kind of strayed away from, or I actually want to go right here. I do believe I kind of strayed away uh, from it, uh, my original idea there, because uh, I got sidetracked. Um, if you have the uh, Volvo Equipment DLC, or if you're thinking of getting it, you have, or like I said, you have to own your own low boy trailer, uh, but you also uh, need to go to the cargo market. It is not available in the freight market, and that's why you need, if you have your own trailer, you need to go to the cargo market. Anywho, uh, so that is the deal there. So you won't find it in the regular freight market, or as far as I know, quick job, you won't find it there either. I may be wrong, they may even update stuff eventually as well, so uh, things change. But as of right now, and while I, honestly, as far as I can tell, it was in the cargo market only. Maybe extra Internal current contracts have it if you have the DLC. I'm honestly not too sure. I'll have to check on that one and I will clarify with that with you guys. Uh, but yeah, I guess I sh it's a good way to actually be able to kind of finish up my thought there. Big shock if you actually just finish your thought. That would be a great idea there, Prime. So let's go ahead and make a left here. Uh, this thing is going to swing out. Lovely. I love this thing. Beautiful stuff. So much so that I almost overcorrected, but hey ho, let's go ahead and get on the highway here. It is quite amazing to me to see the difference between, well, here in the UK of in, on the ETS2 map versus, let's say, Iberia. And let's get my indicator on so I can get out here. You gonna leave me room there, car? Thank you. Um, 
it's just huge between uh, UK and Iberia, and I completely see why uh, every time I come back to the UK, uh, why so many of you want the UK to be revamped. And honestly, I can agree with you guys. I completely understand because it is quite amazing to see in the, well, how many years now? It's been a ton since, e I believe it's eight or so uh, since ETS2 dropped, maybe even more. Um, and I think it's maybe eight now. And um, it is crazy to see the, quali the quality difference between where they started here and well where we are now it is quite impressive and i guess the same goes for ats as well you look at what california and uh, parts of arizona well i guess the former complete arizona parts of or sorry former complete of uh, Cal california there because they have been revamping part of it in stages uh it is just it is pretty incredible to see between uh, just the evolution and I, that's something i do like and it's i really enjoy the fact that they're revamping the older parts for free just as part of the updates and i guess that kind of goes into the next topic here when it comes to the new iberia roads uh yes there'd be another one uh there's actually i believe two uh little roads that was actually one a blog post that was put out when i was not feeling well and so i couldn't i just didn't have the energy to be able to uh, cover that one uh but that is uh I believe it was actually a project that they were using some as training um, or, or practice for some of their new recruits as for the map uh, the map designer team, and they put that uh, put them to the task, and it turns out that they really enjoyed what they did. They did a great job, enough so uh, that they're just going to be putting it straight into uh, ETS2, which is pretty cool. So as far as we know, that will come in 1.42, which is quite crazy to think that we're going on to that now. Not 100% sure. Uh, it didn't say in the blog post, as far as I am concerned, that uh, it specified a released or a release period. I guess it just it always just referred to the future. So we're going to assume that that's the next update, considering the uh, amount of screenshots they had in that blog post it was quite incredible, actually. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go with that. And well, it's quite nice to see that they're continuing to add uh, more roads. I believe they're not highways. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe they're more of a country road esque style, which is really nice to see. Uh, I know Iberia does. Have have quite a bit of highways in it uh, so it's, it'd be nice to have a little bit more connecting roads which i do believe they are i believe that's the one thing in the blog post that i do recall uh, quite clearly is them talking their little connector roads that you can save some time and uh, all that good stuff so it's quite nice to see that coming to ets2 as well So for those who are wondering if you should get the Volvo Equipment DLC, I know it's a little bit of a talking point. I know there are some mods for various equipment stuff as well. Um, honestly, this is a situation where you just kind of have to go with what you feel um, is right. Uh, I honestly like the fact that it is stock in ETS2, so no matter what happens with updates, you're not going to have to wait for a mod author to be able to... Um, to update well the mod and the other thing is that it is licensed as well so there's not going to be any issues with it being taken down or anything like that uh the quality is just as normal ses software great stuff it's going to be compatible with uh, no matter what version well I, or i shouldn't say no matter what version but uh no matter uh what pc or uh what device you're playing ets2 on um it will scale to the proper scale properly, and it won't affect your game uh, performance-wise, like some mods uh, unfortunately do. Uh, and the other thing is that it just helps SES software. It helps um, it, every little bit helps SES software be able to bring more free updates for all of us. And uh, well, if you think about it, the fact that we're getting all these huge feature updates. Um, constantly here on ETS2 and ATS, the same goes for there as well. Um, it is pretty incredible just to think what they will bring uh, without us having to pay for it, like the revamps. And so, it, honestly, if it was, I, I just did the bundle deal, which uh, as far as I know is still on for 50%. It's 50% off if you own both ATS and ETS2, you can buy both the DLC. So essentially what you're doing, you're getting both DLCs for the price of one. And I have to say that is a snag of a deal, considering it's only a few dollars depending on where you are anyways. Um, it's not that bad, but all it does is just, it gives some different content to be able to haul around, some more brand names. And it's nice just not to have 
Um, oh, we're getting a little bit of rain. Well, how about that? Haven't had too much rain in the series too uh, very often. I don't force the weather, uh, 100%. Uh, I do like to have a little bit of varying every here and there, but sometimes it just ha a lot of time it's just uh, sunny because I do have the probability of rain turned down a bit more. Uh, but nonetheless, it is definitely a really nice uh, DLC edition. Keep it on the road. Um, it's just it, it's nice to be hauling something that is. Uh, stop, well, it, it, something that is just, you know the quality's there, you know it's licensed, and it just looks good. Especially when you do something like this, you've got the Volvo, with a Volvo, it just, it just looks really good. Big screen freeze as I try and, <laughs> let's try and take a screenshot just because. Oh, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. How long have I been doing that? Did I just... Oh, I think I just dripped across, uh, drifted across the road when... Oh, that's when. When I drifted across the road there. Oh, man. <sighs> yeah. That happens. Good old Prime. Problem when you drive on the, on the left-hand side. Well, I guess, sorry. When you sit on the left-hand side of a vehicle all the time, and then you get into, uh, for example, here in ETS2, and you can occasionally take a, a truck that is right-hand drive, and then driving on the left-hand side of the road instead of the right-hand side of the road is definitely a mind trip, I'll give it that much, and I th am severely speeding. My word. Not good at all, but it's... I'm, I mean, it was kind of unfortunate we got a little bit of rain here, because I was really looking forward to the sunset, but nonetheless, it still looks really good here. Uh, as good, I think, as, uh... Uh... <laughs> I think as good as, as this map detail in its era, uh, can be. And I am certainly looking forward to the day that, uh, UK will be revamped. Uh, we know it is supposed to be... Well, it's supposed to be coming... Well, I'm gonna say it's supposed to be coming, because... Ultimately, they're... They just finished the Germany reskin. Uh, it seems like it's possibly Switzerland or maybe Austria. Uh, or maybe, I thought maybe it was Austria. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I believe this is the Austria reskin then. And so they're just kind of going around. I'm sure the UK is being worked on right now. I may even be forgetting if they leak something about it. Oh, understeer. Crazy. My word, the rain really does affect sometimes, I think. I guess I'll have to test that, but I do believe the rain, uh, with certain situations will actually affect, um, the handling of the trucks. Uh, just base in ETS2 without any other uh, physics mods and stuff like that. Uh, that would be something that's interesting to know. I'm kind of drifting all over the lane here. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's been a few days there, people. Been a rough few days, but it's okay. I'm getting back, I'm getting more energy, it's all good. It is all good. It does look good though, eh? Just the Volvo and the two two Volvos going along. I I know I could have done a different truck. Uh, I just had to for the sake of uh, cohesiveness. And I do have to say this looks pretty clean. And I <laughs> I, I would like to say that this would happen in real life as well. Um, you get a Volvo, uh, well, a company, a construction company that hauls around their own equipment, but. They spend a lot of money, and like there are quite a few companies that will just buy from one company or uh, one manufacturer because that way it's easier for servicing. You're not going getting parts from this, that, and especially when it comes to a Volvo engine, is a Volvo engine. I would assume the diesel engines will probably have a similar, you know, simple oil filters and stuff like that. Generally, will be a uh, same-ish size depending on obviously the scale of the engine. Uh, but I believe there have been I know around. Uh, here, here in Canada, some, here in Canada, sometimes there'll be uh, construction companies that just, uh, for example, buy everything um, from one manufacturer and including the trucks if possible, um, and that way they can just keep everything uh, minimal when it comes to repair, uh, diff various repair parts, and also just the fact that they probably get discounts whenever you buy quite a few equipments at with one brand, especially with. Especially with the price of these uh, construction pieces of equipment, for example, the excavator I'm hauling right now, uh, that would not be a very che cheap piece of equipment, let alone this truck, which is uh, expensive enough. So uh, it's definitely, it would definitely be interesting, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but I, I have a feeling it happens in real life. And if you know anything more about that, let me know, of course. Now, I do also have to just uh, say a huge thank, to, a thank you to everyone who's been supporting uh, the channel over the last bit. It does mean a lot. I know I say it all the time, uh, but it is my honest, 
truce there, um, especially when you know I'm not able to um, cover certain things or I'm not able to get stuff out. But I don't feel I don't put any pressure on myself um, because I don't want to feel make stuff feel generally forced. Uh, I know t today may not be the smoothest of commentary or deliveries, whatever. Uh, it's okay. It's it's the way it is. Um, but I do appreciate you guys sticking it through with me and all the different ideas I have. Uh, you guys would have seen, um, well, I guess I guess it was just a day or two ago, I, I launched the uh, F1 Hot Lap series, which I have to say is really fun. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, you know what, it's just something simple um, for me to do. But because I love racing, I love F1 so much, uh, it's really nice to be able to, well, hop around in F1 2021. I am still learning it a lot, so take it easy on me. Um, I'm not, uh, I, I haven't done much, well, that, uh, Sochi hot lap, you guys can see. I have, I didn't do a custom setup on it. I'm kind of testing out some setups just to kind of, I know I could look it up, but I want to try and figure, uh, I know a little bit about how the technical, or I know a decent amount how the technical stuff works, but I didn't have, I didn't spend the time last time doing a custom setup, and I'm also just creating the custom setups so I can use them. Uh, so take it easy on me. Uh, <laughs> wasn't the fastest, um, uh, of course there but it's honestly a pretty realistic time uh, considering what they did last year obviously I don't know what qualifying will be like this week uh, or this weekend sorry um, but as far as I know it seems like they're forecasting rain and you guys are probably going to see this video um, after qualifying or possibly the race depending on when you're watching this whatever day you're watching this um, but I'm hoping launch day will be um, a sooner than later but Again, good old YouTube sometimes has a different opinion on that. I'm going to get the headlights on. It's starting to get pretty dark. And we need to try and see. Can we... Man alive. A little bit of traffic here. Just a little bit of traffic. But yeah, that that looks uh, pretty good, my friends. Another screenshot just because. I'm going to probably start doing some teaser uh, content uh on the various, uh, well, I guess various, I say various, on, <laughs> on probably, maybe even in the Discord or even the, um, uh, it's probably Twitter as well, um, for upcoming content, just because it's kind of fun, uh, honestly. And, you know, I like to share, uh, what I do, uh, whether it's inside or outside of the, uh, videos. Uh, it's kind of nice just to, uh, uh, do some stuff there. So let's try and get across here before anything happens. Stay in this right hand lane. Feels so weird. Feels so weird. I should. <laughs> it's such it's such a weird feeling to be going on this side of the road, honestly. Uh, but I don't know what side. Speaking about side of the road, I don't know uh, if I'm turning left or right up here. So we're just gonna keep it around here and call it good. Um, that's a tunnel and a half. Oh, that was a weird kind of glitch through the roof. Oh well, that's fine. Looks pretty good, have to say. Does look pretty good indeed. And here comes the onslaught of rain. Um, oh, it's a truck dealer de uh, discovered. Perfect, I like that. I like that a lot. I think we already have a Scania dealer unlocked anyways, but I'll take another one just because. Sounds good to me. Definitely getting dark here, uh, but it does look really good. Oh, good old lighting changes. Another reason why uh, anything that is paid that supports SES software helps go, or, go towards these truly incredible upgrades. And uh, I, this lighting revamp is probably one of the... Between that and the FMOD integration for sounds, the FMOD library, um, this is definitely a major, <laughs> a major, major overhaul here. Let's try and get around here So taking anyone out really cut that corner wide just because I feel like I was in a American truck again. But that's fine. Uh, looks like we need to go up here and I'll be on our left hand side. Okay, let's continue around long corner. This is like going on forever and looks like we're going in here. Beautiful stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn it in. Don't go too wide. Oh, that's where we're reversing. Okay. So we're luckily, because this is such a, well, the trailer turns, so we can actually just kind of spin. Oh, I've, I forgot. My, I was going to go this way and then go over to, uh, into that corner there by that tree. But I realized then, uh, 
my blind side reverse is now what I always thought would be not my blind side. So we're going to continue spinning around here. Um, just kind of pivot the trailer. Just because. Probably not great on it, but whatever. That's fine. Put it in reverse. Let's see what we can get into here. Let's try it again. Oh yeah, I forgot this thing. Turns basically on a dime. As much as a dime can turn, especially in with a truck. Um, oh my word. I haven't done a trailer like this in ages. Okay, I'm going to try this again. That didn't have it. We're going to just come into the inside here. So actually, I could use the exit here. Or the entrance and exit. Driveway. Call it the driveway. Um, see what we can do here now. Let's put it over that way a little bit more. Let's see if we can... There we go. Oh my word, this thing just wants to turn for days. Okay, we're just going to force it in there. We're forcing it in there. No, it's not going to take it. Not going to take it. Really? Okay, well, I guess we're going to... Oh, I don't want that. I guess we're going... We're going to try to straighten it up and see if I can get it in. I really got to do more ETS2 if that is the case there. What did I get caught on? Oh, I think I hit... Oh, I forgot that it rotates so much. Oh, this is driving me insane. Okay, let's do this. Put in reverse. Second time. Like, six times the charm, I guess. I guess maybe this is third now. Uh, well, yeah, this is, this is it. Straighten up your trailer reversing. Always smart. Always smart, my friends. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and just shut off the wipers there. Uh, turn off the lights. Turn off the truck. Go to the outside, get rid of that numpad thing. I do not care. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of ETS2 Showcase. Great to be back here. Uh, it is nice, like I said, to check out this Volvo DLC because I'll be, of course, to, or the Volvo Equipment DLC. Of course, I will be doing an ATS version of this uh, very, very soon, so don't you worry about that. And besides that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.